What's up, everybody? Pumpkin here. So, as you know, I do like to play a lot of Squiatel, and a lot of the times people ask me, what's the best Squiatel deck? Uh, what's the best leader? Uh, and it's typically Ethne. Uh, I would say in this patch, it might be Francesca, but then again, Francesca struggles against uh, Northern Realms. It's good against Syndicate, but uh, that, that Northern Realms matchup is really hard. The, uh, the few unit or a spell unit, whatever you want to call it, um, so today I have an Ethne deck. It's a pretty heavy removal list. The only thing abnormal about this list is the Fav Water. Fav Water typically is only seen in Dana lists or sometimes Francesca lists. Um, typically you would run Ithlan and Skags in a deck like this. So I decided I would cut the Ithlan Skags package with the Agitators, of course, and replace it with Fav Water. Uh, the rationale behind this is very simply, uh, Ithlan Skags is a really, really good combo. As long as you draw it early. Uh, if you draw Skags in round three, it's quite bad. If you don't draw Skags in round one or two, your Agitators and your Ithlan are really awkward. If you draw Skags, but you don't draw any of the boosts, it's really, really awkward. Basically, I don't actually think they're good cards because they're too draw dependent. Um, it's just not worth it. More often than not, it's pretty suboptimal. So I decided instead of playing these two gimmicky cards that are like... Basically, the only way these two cards get value is if you draw both of them. Ithlin, you can kind of play early and throw it for carryover, and that's not bad. Granted, Shieldert is always a card, and that's kind of scary. Um, so I decided to replace Ithlin Skags with Fav Water, and it's actually really good. I really like it. It's not a two-card combo. It's just whenever you draw Fav, you have it. It's really good for bleeding. Uh, we're in a meta right now where bleeding is key. Typically, you never bleed with Ethne because you would play cards like Gigni um, or Scorch. But with this deck, you can 2-0. I actually 2-0 pretty aggressively against most combo decks just because a lot of decks such as like Townsfolk Syndicate or say some of the Northern Realms lists, uh, they really want a really long round. So pushing for 2-0 is really nice, especially because you have explosive cards. If you open Fav Water into Justice, into Malayan Removal and Engine, you're up like 20 points. Uh, you can basically play two or three more cards there, pass and get free card advantage and you deny their uh, their long round strategy. So I'll go through the deck really quickly. Uh, Ethne is there for removal, obviously, and for lots of provisions. Oak is just a fantastic card. Water is obviously very good with Fav. Justice, very good uh, proactive card. Works well with Fav Water. Uh, very, very explosive. Professional, uh, you do want to play some kind of tall removal. Scorch is a little bit too expensive. COC is not as good as Professional. So we're playing Professional. Why don't we run Geralt? Geralt's 1p cheaper, but playing a 3 is pretty bad, whereas worst case scenario, Professional is a 6. Uh, typically, your opponent does play at least a 6, so usually Professional is worst case a 9 for 11, which is not bad because it has the upside of smashing a really tall unit, so I think it's fine. Uh, Immune Dragon is very good against certain matchups, very good against Syndicate, very good against like Francesca decks because uh, it is immune. Or you just Bloodlust. The Bandish effect is very good against Commandos. Um, Northern Realms is seeing a lot of play right now. So the Blue Stripe Scout and the Commando uh, is at the forefront of that. And that is also why we have Northern Wind in the deck. The idea is you'd like to draw at least two of them in round one. If you're lucky, you might even draw all three. Uh, but the idea is to draw between one and three. Uh, in round one so that you can deny the carryover, right? If you deny, if you kill, if, excuse me, if you banish one of their commandos, you save yourself four points on the board right then and there, and you save yourself four points in the future. So that's quite good. Uh, and against those stacks, uh, if they don't have commando for whatever reason, maybe they don't draw it. I don't know how that happens, but it is possible. It's still four removal and they play plenty of engines. You're never going to not find value. Uh, it's good against Syndicate, obviously, because uh, banishing Flying Redanian is quite good. Uh, and it's good against Nofgard because they play lots of four engines with the um, Fire Scorpion. Sometimes they play Nausicaa and, of course, Roach for Sire. Uh, so just, just a good card. Removal is quite good, especially in a deck that likes playing removal. Malayan. Removal. Good. Ida. Uh, I have this card in the deck for one matchup and one matchup only. Syndicate, because they like to play Summoning Circle. Otherwise, it's a 7 for 8, which, yeah, it's not great. But, yeah, you kind of need to remove Summoning Circle. If you don't, you just auto-lose that matchup. So, yep, we run Ida. Fav, obviously, is important for Fav Water combo. Siren is just nice. Uh, removal. Sometimes your opponent might play, like, a 6-point engine or something, and you don't really want to play, say, Malayan and 2 Ethne pings, or maybe they play, like, an 8-point engine. 
Um, Siren kind of helps with that. You can just go ahead and lock the unit. Milva is obviously a very good card. Most of the cards in this list are Scoia'tael units other than the Regis Bloodlust and the two Northern Winds. Uh, Northern Winds we talked about a little earlier. Very good. Banish effect. Banish is a very, very useful uh, mechanic in this current meta because there's lots of cards to banish. Uh, Muscles are obviously very good with Justice. Archers, just a very good card. Panther, I only run one because there's some Scoia'tael here and there. Um, yeah. It's an okay card. Uh, the time when it shines is when Fav Water is on the board, in which case it's an 8 for 6, which is really good. Uh, Elven Swordmaster, just a good proactive engine. Um, yeah. Dried Fledgling, it's a pretty decent card. I actually think it might be better to run two of these and cut the BME. BME can be kind of awkward from time to time, uh, especially if you play the first one. Sometimes they play around the second one later on. So maybe two BMEs is wrong, uh, but BMEs are pretty good. Uh, typically, I'll open with something like Milva. My opponent will play a card, and I almost always BME it. So, yeah, it's a pretty decent card. Uh, the times when it's not a decent card is when your opponent opens with, like... So, like, if your opponent's playing Nilfgaard, they have Portal into Fire Scorpion, so that's two units. Or something like Vigo into Triple Brigades is all is obviously a problem as well. So, against Nilfgaard, don't keep BME in your hand. Uh, against Skoytel, probably don't either, because some of them run Roach, and some of them run Justice, or all of them run Justice. I guess the question is whether or not they play it in round one or not. Uh, either way, it's a, it's a fair card. Uh, and Skirmisher is a very good card. Very good removal. Works well with Ethne to remove four-point engines. Uh, and just a good value card, five value, and damage is very good in a deck like this, and it works well with Fog Water early on if you're not playing Justice. So it, it's nothing new, nothing crazy. Uh, the Fog Water package is surprisingly good, though. So I would suggest you give it a try if you haven't already. Uh, drop that Ithlan Skaggs. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but Ithlan Skaggs bricks so, so often for me. Uh, I, I just kind of got fed up with it i some days i say oh the card's amazing it's so good because well i draw well and then other days it's complete garbage so yeah kind of a draw dependent combo so this is the workaround um in terms of play style it's gonna play like any other deck uh, other than if you do have five water or justice in round two and your opponent's deck is good in the long round you can typically opt to push and go for a 2-0 and when i say 2-0 sometimes i actually mean a 2-0 like you play every single card in 2-0, but more often than not, it usually means playing like every card but one or two and then passing, basically looking for like a free card advantage or to, to deny your opponent's really long round. Um, so yeah, hope you guys enjoy the deck and the gameplay, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Drog should only transform knights. Well, that's interesting. I don't know. What do you guys like? What would, if you guys had to balance Drog, how would you do it? Would you make Revenants row restricted, say melee? Would you Humans have no make it uh, adjacent units, so it's only two units? Would you uh, increase provisions? What would you do? Reach one? Wait, there's no reach, so you'd have to make it melee restricted. Turn three human? Okay, I mean, adjacent, I would say adjacent's better. It's better to... Uh, word it and then on top of that you can uh what's it called Fuck. it's no unit so damage is pretty bad uh adjacent's better and then just bring p cost down we should be playing around dive i don't really know how to play around dive with this but we'll try i am the forest and the forest is me Wait, is this like old school woodland? Oh shit. I never miss. I've never seen this deck before. I mean, I've seen the deck before, but it was like years ago. Revenant is so cool. Yeah, Revenant is so cool. 10 Revenants is not so cool. Make it transform only one row. I mean, that would basically be the equivalent of making it row locked, right? Pretty close to being the same thing. Don't you right. Me. Take care of myself? Other than the fact that it knocks off vitality and bleed.
Adjacent seems the best option. Yeah, I think so. Reduce the P to like 10 and do adjacent. Not even 10. Make it like an 8. Yeah, I mean, shit. If they want to make it as good as the other NR gold, you just make it a 7. I mean... To catch up here, he has to blow spear tip. I'm just worried that it's going to transition into a no unit deck. Go a little deeper. I think either Jason or allow him to choose two or three units. Yeah, sure. Even if it's your opponent's. Yeah, but it's human only. How relevant is that? Make him 4P. All MO decks are no unit. Yeah, but why would he be playing Neckers? Like, Drowners make sense because they do damage. This makes sense because it does damage. He just doesn't do damage. Am I supposed to bleed? I don't know. I'm supposed to bleed if it's a no unit deck, but there's no signs. If I hit Fav, I'll go. Okay, I'll bleed. It's a good hand. Panther's nice. I guess I don't need the Swordmaster. I'm scared of no unit, so we'll push. Don't bully him. I mean, I'm not trying to bully him, I'm just trying to win. It's a difference, right? Player on Poggle? Nah, he doesn't have Poggle. He would have played it already. See if he draws Ozzy's well. Ozzy's pretty good here. Digging deep. I don't think it was a no unit tech. He can play a single non-unit. There will be no negotiation. You should have rope too. No, nah, that's pushing it. I'm liking this fob water. It's pretty good. I could play for Oak, but I'm more gonna play for Lacerate. This is most likely a new unit deck. Oh, it's Dwarf Heavy. Nice. Dwarf Heavy is worse than uh, the no unit. Or, not the no unit, Spellatel, I guess is a better name. Hi, nice hair. Have you made it yourself? I mean, yes, I personally grew it out myself. My name. I don't Oh, the different deck. 
to the crows. You had to have your mom grow yours? Oh. They can Sounds hide. awkward. Can you sh share your secret to your hair? It's hair. I don't know. There's no secret. You just have to grow your hair out a lot, right? Lots of hair. And then, oh, it's wavy, kind of. I don't know. Unleash the gay hair. Yes, I have unleashed it. Heal my fury. <laughs> Gotta push. Haven't seen Ethne in ages. Really? She's good. She's not bad. I'm scared of Ragnarok, so we gotta push it. Do you use shampoo? No, I use... Yes, I use shampoo. Get it, you baldy-faced baby. Do you use deodorant on your head? That's weird. Oh, he's going in. Ah, they use tire my tongue about that. Some things cannot be forgiven. Do you bathe with water or milk? Uh, actually, orange juice is typically my go-to. Play Skyrim, some more points than Bomb. Probably be my pass here. Oh. I suppose we can go one deeper. Actually, what if we just go Sword super deep? Weapons laugh to scorn. Hmm. We either play Oak here or we play Justice and keep going. What are my top decks like? Okay. Keep going, I guess. I'm scared. Pass? No, we keep going deeper. I want to smash them. Plays around last right? With pulp or without? Extra pulp, actually. Okay, so definitely has last right. Malitalas melons, you're one damn thunder heat. Sixteen last right, enough. But I have three carryover. Sure. Wonder why he pinged the uh, dwarf if he doesn't have last rate. All right, we're looking for one of these two. That's fine. That's good. I mean, it's not bad. It's a six. Six is more than five.
The five is bad because it plays into muzzle, and there's a good chance this tech plays muzzle. Follow me this way. Meh. We're the best regiment in the whole plowing north. Let's get this over. Play on Barney. All right, if he has Barney, we lose. To ten. Cool. What you want to do, no matter what game you're going into, you want to provide something that nobody else provides, right? Whether that be you're really good at the game, uh, you have lots of knowledge of the game, maybe you you know a lot of lore about Gwen or something. Uh, you're a funny guy, personality, um, no place in you're really good at deck building, right? You, you need to offer something different from what's already being offered. Uh, typically the easiest is just being really good at the game because that is usually something you can achieve. That's what most people usually go for. Stream artifact, loss of potential there, yeah. I don't like this because, um, what is it? Portal on top of brigades are problematic. The waters of Their taste still you also, yeah, or you can look really pretty. That's also another option, but. Not everybody can do that, but if you can, that's a bonus. Why not Oak in the back, force Professional early, then Justice in the back to play around Gigney? Um, because if he has any kind of Dragoon or Saren in hand, that line of play doesn't work and I lose a ton of value. But yeah. Back in line! That is definitely something I could have done instead. I mean, if he lets this live, I'm happy. GG. Consistency? Well, consistency is important once you start streaming. Um, right? The more you stream, the more likely it is for somebody to find you. Sounds really creepy, but um, right. And if they if they follow you, they'll start coming back for more. Uh, I would say if you're going for a card game, deck guides are big. I mean, that's personally how I got my initial boost. I made a deck. Or I published a guide for a deck. I didn't create the deck. If I use that word, some people get triggered. Um, it was a good deck. I wish I could pass on 8, but it's kind of a bad play. I really don't want to fall water. I suppose I can panther. A four, not too bad. Oh, another thing. Don't try to copy people. Don't try, like, I don't know. Maybe you want to stream Fortnite. Don't try to copy Ninja, right? I think that's a mistake streamers. I mean, I guess this doesn't even apply to streaming. This is like streaming YouTube, a lot of things in life. Um, you don't want to try to copy people because, yeah, I mean, 
in theory, it's okay because, oh, it worked for them, so it must work for you. But once again, going back to that, providing something new is important. Eight points for Nilfgaard? I don't know. The only time passing here is bad as if you're playing Dragon Stream, but I haven't seen a single Dragon Stream in, like, the entire month, so... Come on, stalkers! Okay. We I want to be like Ninja when I grow up. You play with Surfer DD in Seasonal? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely possible and it's probably very good. It's just, I haven't seen any, so I'm not going to play around it. I could keep going and look for Justice, but this hand is... I guess we can drop the skirm. So we'll probably see a portal here. Uh, actually, he could just Notice. be playing like a mid range. Oh, yeah, he's playing mid range. I don't mind committing a Milva because he might go really deep, and getting this on the board early is important. I don't mind losing it if he takes a pass here, because it means I get a long round with fob water. I guess this is bad if he has another Nilf Guardian Knight, but if he plays one, it typically means it's a Shoop deck. Okay. Can we see a deck list? Yeah, I can show the deck after. I made it last night, throw it together. It's actually working pretty well. F. Oh, also, if you're really considering becoming a streamer, just note that uh, you won't really make any money early on. Like, none. Um, yeah. You probably already know this, but just in case you don't. Uh, you don't just become a streamer and make shit tons of money. It doesn't really work that way. Um... My first month of streaming, I put in, I streamed like 8 to 10 hours a day, 7 days a week for a full month. A lot of hours. Uh, I streamed what? Like 250 hours? That doesn't sound right. Rare I streamed a lot of hours. Music. And at the end of it, I made like, how much money did I make? I think at the end of that month, I made like a whopping like a hundred or a hundred fifty dollars. So, yeah. They can hide, but there's no escape. Cheers started. Oh, thank you so much for the two hundred bits. Rare, but not so rare music. Oh. That ain't bad if you enjoy it. I yeah sure. I mean I had, I was streaming during the summer, so I wasn't really doing anything at the time, so it wasn't a big deal. But like, just keep that in mind. Don't just assume. Yeah. Can you link the Francesca list? Uh, go on R2's Snapshots website. They have one. Mine is almost identical. I just cut the uh, muzzle and put in... Uh... Alright. We're still not enough on Pro. I want to play this when it catches up. Until it catches up, I'm not willing to play it. It's a, it's a pretty big tempo play. Pro tip for streaming, have and keep to your schedule. Some streamers still make this mistake. <laughs> who does that chat? You guys want to uh, tell me who does that?
What did you cut? I cut muzzle for fables and added two bombs to make the full test matchup better. I don't know. If he keeps going deeper, it's going to suit us. Okay. I don't know why he passed, but it's a good pass. This is two. That was the trick. Can we ever listen to Lana's new track? We listened to it to the other day, the other day, but maybe we listen to it again. I'm surprised nobody is Tay Tay add a new song. I'm surprised nobody's talking about that. But we we can keep it that way. I'm not complaining. No ethne skin? Yeah, I forgot to put it on. Lana is better than Tate. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that statement. I don't think anybody would disagree with- Oh, okay, that's not sure whatsoever. Is Cleaver worth it? Um... It's worth it in a... Dwarf Francesca deck. Sure. It's okay in Ethne. But it only really matters if you win coin flip and they TA early and you draw it in round one. Otherwise, it usually doesn't matter. Taylor's more popular. Yeah, because they haven't discovered Lana yet. Just because someone is more popular doesn't mean they're better, right? Nine's probably the best we're going to get. It's not a hyper thin list, which means there's no, like, Xarthysius. Best card is four threes or four three three three. Because it potentially kills the professional and the skirmisher and lowers my oak value. Shoop madly make shoop rock drop you. Why put DD in your deck when you can just high roll it? Forehead. I don't mind this dying. We're gonna hold on to this. The idea is once this dies, we play this and get an extra point on Dryad. You guys want to listen to Lana? Wait, what? Nani? Why not play this up? Can you explain how harmony works? Why would you get an extra point if the dwarf dies? So the way harmony works is every time you play a unit that you don't already, like the primary category. So like, 
We have a dwarf on the board, but now that it's dead, it's no longer on the board. So it now checks and this is a new dwarf, right? So this will go up. But like if I played another dwarf, nothing would happen, right? So in theory, you could play an elf and they kill it and they you play an elf and they kill it and you can just keep getting harmony stacks multiple times. GG. Huh? I think it was only 11.